What's up great people, African Traveler again and today I'm going to take you to the famous Back to Nature farm owned by Kunga. So Wodemeyer took you some times back, Lynn from Tuko took you some times back, the professor himself, PLO, came to visit the farm, we had the Queen Key who came to visit the farm. So the farm is uh, getting famous and famous and so many things that are happening. So Kunga is one of my greatest friends and I decided also to take that opportunity and visit the farm. So it's very amazing and uh, really beautiful farm. Uh, basically due to the fact that plants that are being planted in this farm are organic in nature. Uh, whereby he's not using any artificial chemicals. Everything is natural and he's calling it back to nature farm. So on this episode, I tried to capture different perspective from what has been shared before and um, so that you guys can learn different things. So yeah, so I hope you guys will enjoy. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you guys will enjoy. So I'm at Kunga's farm. Kunga, yes, sir. what's the name of this cow? <laughs> Hello, baby. That is Guna. Guna. Oh, I heard you call him Guna. Yeah, that's Guna. Uh, 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 he's not scared at all. Not scared at all. Uh, he loves uh, banana leaves. I have a couple uh, uh, over there in bananas in this part of the farm. Uh, that's where we do our composting heap. We were just talking with Water Maya. Yeah. So once she does go oh, to the so bathroom. This is the place. I saw you uh, with Karanja as well. Ah, uh, Karanja there. <laughs> now, this yeah. is what we've done. Yeah. We, those are we've already used one or two heaps in the farm. Yeah. Those are two brand new heaps. Now yeah. uh, this is another one that we've been collecting because yeah. now we have something on the farm called every day is a composting day because mm. soil is so very important john yeah. because the soil is what even allows the immunity so that you can fight off pests and diseases just like our bodies yeah. our bodies need to be healthy and you know and therefore if they're healthy things like the virus and uh, things can fight off the soil can fight off certain pests and diseases yeah. if it's healthy and so the compost allows to put the nutrition back into the soil it allows the bacteria the fungus all the wonderful things back into the soil and so in that regards that's the composting that's where the cow, the goat, the chicken, what you saw on that Ooh, other I can side. see it. I can see the quality of the maize plant as well as the beans ah. in the farm. Just on another level. Here you go. And you don't have chemicals on the on, we on don't this. Use the chemicals here organic. This is mother nature. And uh, this is your, see some chicken. Some this is organic chicken as well. There you go. The Whoa. We call them Kianyeji. Kianyeji chicken. <laughs> some of our goats that we have here on yeah. this particular side and uh, have a chance to uh, work with some of building an ecosystem uh, on the farm in that regard so I just love the way the the place is clean ah it's the really cleanliness. the cleanliness is a uh, we emphasize that heavily yeah we push that the culture it's very important as you're building a farm yeah to build a culture on the farm and so this ah uh, here we go Heading up our water tower. The famous the joined. famous water tower. There you go. <laughs> and up there we're joined by a queen herself. She's the queen key. Atop her throne. Guys, these are beans. So let's go up. Kunga is on our way up. Yes, yeah, that's here. <laughs> cool. No problem. Uh, it's not easy at all. <laughs> Water, the basis. soil, <laughs> air, oxygen, it's like the yeah. four. The elements, earth, and air, fire, uh, well, not fire. We don't want fire. No. <laughs> well, fire is the sunlight. Yes. Sunlight is like without sunlight, nothing is happening. Earth and a matter of fact, when you see the green, mm -hmm. green we learned in school through the process of what we call photosynthesis. Yes. Yeah. So plants, the way the creator of the almighty designed mm -hmm. is that plants capture mm -hmm. sunlight. The same way the solar panels are capturing sunlight, mm -hmm. the plants are capturing it Absolutely. and it stores it in the form of what they call chlorophyll. Okay. <laughs> and this chlorophyll, if you were to look at it molecularly, mm -hmm. scientifically, and I'll ask anyone, I don't know if you're recording, if they can hear, if you put that, yeah. that makes it in the video. If you Google chlorophyll and hemoglobin, mm -hmm. chlorophyll, plant blood, hemoglobin, human blood, 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 identical. Mm -hmm. 
molecularly. Mm -hmm. It is almost, a, it's like a miracle. How could the molecular structure of chlorophyll match that of plants? And that's why when you drink, first when you eat, and they're green, they're, called, they're primarily called cruciferous vegetables, when you eat them, but when you juice them and you drink that green, those green juices, yeah. the body doesn't even need to digest. It's absorbed. Immediately. Just like that into the system. And it begins the process of healing, rejuvenating, revitalizing. And so green is so very, and look, look the green. This is Mother, Mother Africa. How green it is. Beautiful. And if we were to go into that section of the farm there, we can actually see Mount Kenya. The trees are hiding it mm -hmm. here, but Mount Kirin, Kirinyaga. You can the sprinklers are automatic because of the, of the solar? Or? Okay, so. Because of these solar panels, yeah. and we have 18 of them. Solar panels. Solar panels. Yeah. Those solar panels are connected. There's a, a brick house down here. Yeah. You'll see it. Inside that brick house, we have what we call a solar converter. That converter yeah. is a digital one. And it works that as soon as there's enough sunlight, yeah. it triggers 700 feet into the ground, 250 meters into the ground, a pump. And that pump attached to the pump are the wires coming from the solar, con uh, solar converter. Yeah. It triggers the motor. And then there's a pipe attached to the pump. And it sends the water up 700, eight, almost 800 feet to the surface. It pushes it further into what you hear if you go quiet. Yeah. So it pushes the water up and it now brings it into these storage tanks. And the reason that you spend so much money to build these towers, you know, and it, it costs, it costs a lot. almost. Uh, no, this system here, we're looking at almost forty, fifty thousand dollars for the the water whole entire water system. Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, because you're looking just the tower alone of about uh, one point five to two million shillings, about twenty thousand dollars just to build this. The, the, the structure yeah. itself. Yeah, these tanks, tanks are like and 70, the solar. No, uh, the solar is something different. So when you're talking about you, the solar panels, then you're talking about the converter, then you're talking about the pump, and we wanted to get the best quality so that you don't have to repair them every two years. So we wanted yeah. the best quality of each so that then you can have reliable water. And then because of the pressure now, you're yeah. able to have it distributed. And without any electricity, without anything, it's able now to get to the field and we did it this high even at nine meters because we're just doing about two acres here yeah. but we have like another eight acres in the back uh, so we want the water to be able to have enough pressure that it can push, push it to the, down to the even when we're irrigating the other part see we have about 200 i think you were missed when we were talking we have about two what this is is really avocado orchard uh, this is an avocado everything that's growing is just to bring in some money yeah. while the avocado trees grow Oh, so the, the long-term goal is to, to have the avocado orchard. That is the long-term goal, but avocado trees take about three years to grow. Yeah. And now the, 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 the maize or the corn is kind of shading them a little bit. Yeah. But you see we've done a 5x5x5x5 five by five by five by five system yeah. laid out here. We have about 270 trees here, but we want to have a little under 3,000 trees on the total land oh. to grow avocados, prim primarily Haas avocados. So that's okay. what you're looking at here, but you've got to keep the farm sustainable. And yeah. so uh, that's why we are. Um, Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is the, what is the price of one of a cutter tree? Uh, you're looking about 150 shillings. 150. Ah uh, no, that's from Kalo Kari. Yeah. We get them from Kakuzi. Kakuzi, yeah. uh, 350 to 400. Per tree. Per tree. What is the difference? The quality. The quality of the scion. You know, it's grafted. Yeah. You want you want if you're going to graft. Yeah. Um, you want to make sure that the scion, because what happens, you find there are a lot of. Um, grafted trees, particularly avocados. Since yeah. avocados became a little bit more popular, yeah. people saw that there was great markets for them, which they are. As a matter of fact, if you covered the entire Africa in avocado trees, yeah. you will not be able to meet the demand on the world market. Why? How? Because avocados are in such high demand. One avocado in America sells for three to five dollars. That's about 300 to 500, 500 shillings, shillings, a single avocado. Chinese are just discovering a taste for avocado and it's growing like gangbusters in China. And so Kenyan government just sort of went into some of the partnership agreements with yeah. the Chinese to start exporting. It's a big, big market. Avocados are healthy 
um, fruit and healthy fats. And so it's something as people are becoming more health conscious, yeah. they look towards a healthy food that tastes good. Because you guys know avocados yeah. are wonderfully tasting. And so um, that's why the market is, is in such demand. So on here, the, the highest demand is what we call Haas avocados. And Haas avocados yeah. are what we have on this particular uh, land, and we're going to be putting more. We have about 270 here. Yeah. Now, when you're putting in a Haas avocado, the, you want to make sure that it's a Haas. You don't want to plant avocados, wait for three years, <laughs> and then realize it's an orange <laughs> tree. <laughs> realize it's apples <laughs> or, or an avocado you weren't looking for and so we said let's go because we know kakuzi has the science when you graft them yeah. um and and they, 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 they call what they call true to type from a agro or agronomist mm -hmm. standpoint and so that is what in a sense we're doing here you may not see it now because you yeah, have can a lot see, of amazing uh, from corn. from a i can see it yeah you'll see that there are small trees so oh, in a five by five system it's a, it's a five by five it's, a, it's like a square yes it's like a square that we are growing the what we call the farm layout and we're doing a high density farm layout meaning that mm. the recommended by the book would be like seven by seven seven by nine yeah. etc so when you bring them close and do five by five uh, you're going to have to make sure that you, you grow the trees correctly so that you're able to maximize what they're able to produce. Mm. Um, so that's sort of what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, and so then everything you see else that's growing in between, you'll see some bananas here, some maize, we have terere on here, we have managu on here, we have spinach, we have kunde, we have many different things. These are ways that we can generate a little bit of income yeah. to keep the farm sustainable while we're waiting for the avocado to come so it's three years before you start about three so. years and they've been here about a year year and a half mm -hmm. uh, and so with that though once they grow you might see in the back there we have about four mature already mature trees oh, yeah, yeah. so they're going to look like those big trees back there mm -hmm. and this whole place will be covered you won't be able to grow anything else on here okay. Except uh, avocado. Uh, I, I've got, then we, we're moving to the other sections of the farms because we have another uh, mm. few acres down there that we want to eventually want to have almost about 3,000 trees on this Whoa. piece of uh, land here. Whoa. And, uh, you know, you get a chance to produce. So, you know, does it, go ahead. No, avocado, does it take a lot to maintain it, to grow it? No, and, that's one of the beautiful things about it. Yeah. As long as you are able to get those roots, mm -hmm. one of the things that they are a little careful about is too much water. So they, there's a disease called Phyphosphorus, which mm -hmm. is a root rot. So they don't like too much water, uh, the roots. Yeah. Um, but once you have that and you put some basic uh, organic materials, they're able to um, take care of themselves. You don't have too much spring. You don't have too much this, that, and the third. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's not a very difficult crop to farm, but it needs the right environment. Yeah. It needs the right amount of water, even though too much water can be bad for it. It does need amount, the right amount of water, about 20, 25 liters per each tree per week. Mm -hmm. Especially as it's coming up, you increase a little bit of uh, additional water as you're getting towards fruiting and harvesting yeah. to sort of get the, you know, the, the large, beautiful avocado um, uh, fruits that come. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Great work with John. Yeah. I'm pushing him to really start his consulting company, the African Traveler <laughs> Tours Tour and Operators, right? And so he'll be helping you curate those who are interested in um, being able to have a digital social media yeah. African experience. This is the man. He's the one who hooked me up with uh, Water Maya to make this whole thing happen. And so I'm grateful, sir. You're okay. a representation of what Africa, the future of Africa, young man, beautiful wife, beautiful child, a beautiful family you're building, uh, and beautiful content you're creating. Mm -hmm. And this is the what, the Africa we have to look forward here in the next few years as we come towards a greater renaissance. Now, the reason we put, you see on a lot of the farm, we put some beans. The reason being is this, every other season, you want to put beans onto the ground to put nitrogen. Uh. The nutrition on the soil is so very important and everything starts yeah. and ends with the soil. And so it's a natural way yeah. of number one, making a little money from the beans, but it puts healthy nutrition into, in, into the soil. In here is our seed beds. Uh. Uh, that's where we plant the seeds 
to ready to then transplant. Into These are seed for what? In here we have seeds for uh, dania. Oh, dania. We have uh, several other, you might even see some of our indigenous vegetables uh. that we have on the seed beds. Nutrients that are in the soil, the biology that's in the soil, the makeup of the soil yeah. that allows then for uh, the crops to uptake. Yeah. Uh, and how to deal with pests. So for instance, well, channels we've had here is like nematodes. Mm -hmm. Nematodes sort of can attack some of the root system that stops the absorption. Yeah. So how do you deal with that naturally? And one of the ways you deal with that naturally is di different varieties of this particular plant. This particular plant is what they'll call Mexican marigold. And the Mexican marigold, we're able to make these wonderful concoctions yeah. when you mix it in with uh, either a little cow urine, rabbit urine, um, some uh, healthy bacteria, microorganisms, yeah. you mix it in with molasses, you're able to then let it uh, sort of um, uh, have a chance to ferment and it produces this wonderful concoction that you can deal with the particular, um, you can deal with the nematodes and and we have other concoctions for other pests and diseases as well yeah. here we had spinach that was on here pre previously yeah. we we always rotate so we've taken the spinach off these eight beds and these are nyanyas these oh, are tomatoes tomatoes there you go now on this other side what is the advantage of interchanging like uh, switching in yeah, terms of planting it's important to rotate crop yeah, rotation the crop rotation is important because you then get a chance to not do what they call mono cropping and therefore it's all about the soil once again mm. and what happens if you're always growing the same thing the monotony of it it removes certain uh and, and plants also not only take nutrients they put certain nutrients into so you want to make sure that you're able to rotate so mm. that they're always a great wonderful balance and harmony of removing nutrients putting other compounds in in a beautiful way that helps to keep balance it's almost like you changing clothes why do you change clothes every day <laughs> at least so that you don't stink See, <laughs> yeah there you go a few things like that you see here we're trying out some ginger uh which is quite interesting i like how you name uh the zones and the, yes we the... have like uh phases what uh, are these that is ginger. That's this is ginger. A very interesting looking. It looks plant. like a banana plant. It does yeah. look like a banana plant. The first plant, time I think I see ginger plants. Go inside a little bit. You see, and then on this side, this yeah. is a very not too many people because many people even would think this doesn't grow in Kenya. But guess what? This here is garlic. This is garlic. This is garlic, my brother. And let me try to. I'm trying to show it to you where you're not taking the Ooh. whole thing out, but the garlic bulbs grow ah. in that regard you might even see it and smell the bulb as it's developing oh. uh, down there so these are garlics that we're trying and we have about three or four beds here of garlic and then we have uh, a bed here of garlic i mean of ginger that of we're just ginger, trying yeah. and turmeric uh some turmeric that we have here oh. on the farm so in that um we are intercropping several different things that will then allow us to generate income uh, uh, here on the farm amazing the farm are what we will then call spring onions and these particular spring onions uh, that we are able that we're growing and these believe it or not you see what's here yeah we can harvest this for about three years meaning what? we harvest not the center what they call the mother mm. plant. we'll harvest what, harvest what we call the suckers that come on the side of these spring uh -huh. onions so it's almost it grows like a lemongrass like this so uh, what you harvest uh, okay, on that, the suckers haven't come out. The suckers will be coming out. Mm -hmm. you, you almost will see them on... Let me see if I can point out a good sucker that will see how they start to come out. So if you will... Uh, oh, you, you might have seen oh, passion some fruit. of these wonderful passion fruits that we have nice. here. So this thing, right? passion fruit. We all love passion fruit juice. And so this yeah. is how they grow. And they're, they're going to grow and create a whole cover. They start so small. And then to see how they, they develop up and we put them throughout the entrance of the farm here oh i can see also on this other side yeah on uh, pretty much all the sides Whoa. here and then what we will end up doing is also on the, the rest of the sides of the farm to bring passion passion they're selling pretty high almost like 100 150 yeah. shillings a, a, a kg so it's just something that can give us a little extra income even just on, on, the, on the side of the farm oh, you, yeah. you seems to be a very busy man on the farm well the farm yeah. keeps one busy but yeah. keeps one busy in a fulfilling way yeah in a way that you can be balanced yeah. harmonized yeah you know you're doing something good for others 
Yeah. We employ a number of people here, give them some employment. Yeah. So it allows, um, it's something beautiful. And I'll advise all, even if you don't do farming on this level, yeah. like when I was talking with Miss Trudy, I said, Trudy, and she, she's the one who even said, Kunga, we used to have at our family a kitchen garden, a small ah, garden yeah. in the house. And I said, Trudy, Back to Nature Organic Farm is going to help you reestablish your, your kitchen, kitchen garden. garden. There you go. So even if you don't farm on this level, we do advise people to engage nature because everyone must eat. You must yeah. eat every single day. And whether it's just having a small kitchen garden, whether it's having a small herbal garden to grow maybe some mint or rosemary or something along those lines, please engage nature because nature will pay you back exponentially in a great way so with that everyone thank you for sharing our experience well, before here. before you wind up yes we see a lot of glory right now yes you come to, to see your glory yes what is encouragement for upcoming people who like to have this farm is it something that you wake up and have it uh, no you just don't wake up and uh, <laughs> set this up and they're tremendous yeah you said people know the glory but they don't know the story yeah there are always challenges that come along when you're doing anything worthwhile in this life. Yeah. Life in and of itself comes with challenges. True. But when you embark on something of this nature, uh, the challenges are going to be compounded. They come left, right, and center. But if your mindset is right, if your commitment is there, if you are tied in passionately, uh, but also purposely into what you're doing, then as the challenges come, you take them, you take those licks, yeah. uh, but you at the same time stay focused on what you want to do, where you want to go. So on a farm like this here, you're looking at four or five years of work. Work from everything from a feasibility study, writing out business plans, um, getting a chance to put structures, organizations together, try, fail, try, fail, 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 try, fail, try, <laughs> fail, 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 try again, right? The saying says that champions are not people that uh, are not knocked down. Champions are people that are knocked down, but they find a way to get up. And if they're knocked down a thousand times, they find a thousand and one ways to get up. And so in that regards, there will always be challenges. And I want to be honest with everyone, even the challenges right now as we stand here are there. Um, all kinds of components of what we're dealing with. But nonetheless, uh, we are steadfast. We remain focused and committed on what we want to do. And we will see this particular um, vision through. And follow us on that journey because we will be sharing some of the challenges even in our mm -hmm. YouTube channel. Back to nature, one word. Back to nature, one word. B-A-C-K-T-O-N-A-T-U-R-E. Space. Africa. Africa. Subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe to my brother's channel. Guys, please, please subscribe, subscribe. He's doing some amazing job. If you want to know anything about farming, if you want to know, to learn more uh, about what we've just shown you guys, just reach him out. Subscribe first to the channel. You can reach him out as well as, 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 well as on Instagram. I saw your Instagram, Instagram yeah, page. Back to Nature Africa yeah. with a K. Africa yeah. with a K. Yeah. Um, you can reach us on our social media. Yeah. I have no problem. You can even send us a WhatsApp message. Mm -hmm. 077. Is it okay if I share it's with okay. that? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Z uh, 254 for those of you. I know, boy, you have a lot of watchers <laughs> who are not in, in, in Kenya spread yeah, out around the world. There you go. Plus 254. Yeah. Uh, 077 324 If you're in Kenya, you do not need to put a zero. I mean, you don't, you, if you're in Kenya, you need to put a zero. If you're not in Kenya, just plus 254 7732435468. Also, he's my mentor in this digital social media space. Make sure, I know a lot of you watch and have not yet subscribed to yeah. his channel, yet you enjoy the content he's putting out. So yeah. please subscribe, support. Subs he, he's gonna get, he has about 30,000, 35,000 yeah, subscribers. subscribers right now. Yeah. He's gonna get to about 50,000 in a short time, hopefully before this year is completed. Uh, and with that, we're gonna grow together and we're gonna show a different side, a different narrative yeah. of what Africa is, who Africa is and why Africa is in the human family uh, because we are not children of a lesser God. Yeah. We are have the same sun shining on everyone else, same air. And so we're human beings and our humanity and dignity needs to be restored in that regard. So you're doing a big job. Our Thank brother Watemaya is doing a big job Thank in you. restoring this particular um, dignity and humanity that we have as African people. So Asante Sana for visiting it's us cool. here at Back to Nature Organic Beautiful Farms. Fun. And with that, we hope to see you again soon. I want to send a shout out to Mrs. African Traveler, your wife, your beautiful <laughs> wife. 
come visit us one day keep up the good work wonderful content uh we know that you're producing and uh we thank your whole entire family you keep supporting this man here thank he you. has a, a, a future ahead of him unimaginable so bright and i'm just happy to be in his presence thank Sanjay you for the kind word very good bye guys see you on the next one peace peace out